Hello, this is Max the Technomancer, continuing on with the Crossroads video tutorial series, and this video is going to be the start of the magic section. <clears throat> so, I should start with a, basically a disclaimer. The magic system in Crossroads is called magic, but uh, thematically doesn't seem very magical to most people. It sort of seems more sci-fi-ish to most people. I'm not going to argue, I just... Eh. It, um, you, I, it's called magic no matter, no matter what it looks like, so let's just get on with it. Uh, magic is basically the next tier after all this stuff. You're still going to need to use all the previous stuff with magic, but, mag but using the magic system is going to unlock a lot of new capabilities. So let's get started on it. To start with magic, you're going to need this an Omnimeter. You're definitely going to need one. And you're going to need a material called pure quartz. This is made with two salt and a piece of uh, nether quartz to make a piece of pure quartz. And it's a basic crafting material for magic. You're going to need a lot of it. Yeah. It is possible to, so it's a probably be a good idea to automate salt before starting magic, almost certainly. Also, in magic there is a way to produce pure quartz automatically as well, but we'll get to that. So, the first thing you're going to need with magic is an arcane extractor. It's made with a stone and this device here called a crystal lens array. Now, you make two crystal lens arrays with pure quartz, one emerald, one ruby, and one diamond. Now, you might notice that these three gems are the, th are the RGB colors, red, uh, red, blue, green. Or, or red, green, blue, rather. And um, that's not accidental. Uh, the RGB colors, uh, color map is going to be very important, for the mag is very important for the magic system. And rubies are used for red, emeralds for green, and diamonds for blue. Now, now once you've got your, your uh, arcane extractor, you're probably going to want some reflectors. These, uh, these are very cheap. Just two stone and a pure quartz. Uh, you use a lot of stone to make things in the magic system along with uh, pure quartz. And you're probably also going to want a lens array, which is just stone and pure quartz again. Now, if I get a hopper, this device, the Arcane Extractor, is how we produce magic, which takes the form of beams, sort of like beams of light. Now, oh, actually, I shouldn't do this without explaining what I'm doing. <clears throat> this machine has a front. It can't face up or down, only horizontally. And it's going to shoot a beam. This thing produces magic. It's going to shoot a beam out the front, and in this direction, and it's not going to shoot it for very long. So we're going to want to try and, uh, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to try and catch the beam. So, so what I'm going to do is use an arcane reflector, which is the main way you're going to transfer these beams of magic, which can accept magic from any side except the front, and it can face any direction, up, down, horizontally, and it will re-emit the beam out the front five ticks later. That five ticks is important. Every device that beams can travel through will delay it by five ticks, except, and this is a special except in the lens holder, which does not add a delay. All right. So if I make a loop of four of these reflectors pointed into each other, oop, and I pointed them correctly, then once this beam is shot into this reflector, it's going to go here, it's going to go here, it's going to go here, here, and it's just going to go in a loop forever, and we've basically trapped it. And we're going to do this so that I can do some to show you what a beam looks like. We're also going to want a color chart, I should have mentioned this earlier, to record our findings. Or not to record our findings, to view our findings after we've recorded them. Before I produce some magic, I'm going to show you what the color chart looks like. It's a giant RGB chart with a lot of uh, X's on it. Well, actually they're slashes. But... And if I mouse over a section on these X's, it'll tell me an RGB value and it'll say undiscovered. And there's also a filter, but since everything's undiscovered, that's not very important. So right now, just note that it's all blocked out. When we, as we discover magical elements, this will fill up with uh, elements. 
So there's four items you can put in an arcane extract, well, five items you can put in an arcane extractor to produce magic. Uh, they are coal slash charcoal, either will work, they function the same, redstone dust, glowstone dust, and salt. They're all sort of powdery substances. Now, each of these will have a different effect, except for the coal and charcoal, which function the same, uh, in, in the arcane extractor. So let's start out with a simple one. Let's just put a piece of glowstone dust in here. Now you'll see it, it consumed the dust and it shot out a beam which is now bouncing around. Now this beam, if I right, if I right, right click something, uh, a device that can transfer a beam with an omnimeter, it will tell, it'll dis, it'll tell, it'll give me a readout on the beam that most recently traveled through it. Yeah. Now if we see here, uh, two new, sorry, two new element discovered light. This beam was of the light element. There are several elements, and light is one of them. Now, we can see more about this beam. Here's the RGB color of the beam. As you can see, it's white, so it's 255, 255, 255, the element light. Uh, and then these four things here, energy, potential, stability, and void. There's one energy, one potential, one stability, and zero void. Now, each beam, each burst of magic, has those four has four components that it's made of that energy potential stability and void void is a, is like the is a more advanced tier of magic that we're not going to concern ourselves with right now we'll get to that later right now energy potential and stability now each of those three is a different color energy is red potential is green and stability is blue this beam has equal parts of all three of them so it's white See, RGB chart comes into play here. If it had, if it had two energy and one uh, potential and one stability, it would be a bit pinkish. Now, if we look at this color chart here, we'll see that it's sort of some of it's not crossed out. Now, if we mouse over these, we'll see it says light. These are all the spots where that RGB value is the light element, because what determines what element it is is the color of the beam, not the amount of magic in it the color of it, the color of the final beam. So for a white beam, it's light. And then for several colors that are kind of white-ish, uh, it's also light. And we and all the things we still haven't discovered are X'd out. Right? Right. So we've discovered light. Now, I'm just going to, uh, well, every element, every Okay, so I should, I should mention some terminology here. If you sum the energy, potential, stability, and void of a beam, we call that's called the power. So this has a power of three because there's one energy, one potential, one stability. One plus one plus one is three. There's zero void, so that's a thing. All right, so power of three. Now every element has its own effect. Well, okay, there's one or two elements that don't do anything, and I'll cover those specifically. But uh, light has a particular effect. Now I should mention that once you discover an element, and, a, and not until then, uh, there will be a, once you discover an element, there will be a section appearing in the book called, well it's already here, there's a, this, uh, there's a, sorry, wrong section. Uh, there'll be a section in the book called Magical Elements, and this will have an entry on every element you've discovered with some information about it. So, we've discovered light, it converts rock materials into glowstone, and glass materials into sea lanterns. Well, what this specifically means is those beams which have an effect, if they hit a block that's not designed to handle beams, they'll do something. Also, if a beam travels 16, uh, 16 blocks without landing in some something designed to transfer beams like a reflector, then it'll that'll that's just the that's the end point of the beam, and it'll do effect at the an effect at the end of that 16 blocks. So they have a maximum distance of 16 blocks without like a reflector or something. So, well, let's demonstrate. It uh, hit this block, which was a rock material because it was andesite, and turned it into glowstone. Now you might have noticed that we got that beam with one piece of glowstone dust, and we got a glowstone block out of it. This means that you could create a system that's glowstone positive and make an automated glowstone machine. 
and any rock material will work. So with that, what I've just shown, with what you've already seen, you should be able to make uh, basically an automatic uh, an automatic glowstone machine, uh, an, uh, just an automatic glowstone dust machine that just makes tons of it. And that's right. It's all four of those things. Except, well, uh, these four things that can be put into an extractor are all automatable. That's for sure. Coal, not so much. These four, though, and charcoal will go into coal. So that's how we would automate glowstone. Also, like it said, the light element will turn glass materials into sea lanterns. Now, I should mention something about beam merging. So if I put multiple pieces of glowstone dust in here, uh, we see that, okay, there's multiple beams going through this loop, but I put four pieces of dust in, right? And yet you only see three beams, but one of those beams is thicker. That beam is where, uh, just by random chance, uh, just, beca just because of the timing where I put the dust in, uh, the, the, the light beam from this extractor hit the reflector while it was already receiving another light beam, and, they t and the two of them merged into a thicker light beam. So that had energy 2, potential 2, stability 2. It's the same color, but it's got double the power. So beams merge losslessly, and yeah. So that's what glowstone does. It gives you one, a 1, 1, 1 beam. Well, what does salt do? This is a much thicker beam because it's much higher power, and you'll notice it's of the stability element. It's, it's a 0, 24, 36. That's 0 energy, 24 potential, 36 stability. Now, it's not pure stability, but it's a... So a pure stability beam is of the stability element, and any color that's close to blue, is, which is the color of stability, will also be the stability element. So if you look in this table, that section is filled up. So now... If I said was to say, okay, I've forgotten how you make light, the combination for light, I can search for light, and it'll X over stability because I've searched for light, so now I can see, okay, these are all the RGB values that'll make light. Stability over here. Now, stability is one of the few effects that does nothing, except it notes here in a crystalline master axis. We'll get to the crystalline master axis later. That is a case where the stability element uh, actually does something, but 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 uh, outside of that machine, which we'll get to later, it does nothing. However, that beam, so that beam uh, did have stability and potential in it, just more stability and potential. Coal or charcoal makes this orangish beam here, which is the charge element and is 36 energy and 24 potential. Now charge over here is um, rather interesting. <laughs> It's uh, powerful, shall we say. Um, if I put any block in front of it, or if it were just to go 16 blocks without hitting anything, where it do, do an effect, it, it strikes with lightning. And if it hits a, a, a rock material, it uh, strikes it with lightning and makes a redstone block. Now, as you might be imagining here, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, redstone also makes the charge element, this time with 24 energy and 36 potential. So you could make an, a redstone dust machine, because the grindstone has a recipe to convert redstone blocks into redstone dust. And you can totally automate redstone that way. Salt, you already can all know how to automate pretty much with the water centrifuge. You, you'll have to work out on your own how to do charcoal. You'll have to, the only way I've thought of is to do a tree farm, but I can think of many ways to do tree farms, and I've done several, but uh, you can make a tree farm and smelt the wood. So that's some of the basics of beams. Various different elements that do different effects. However, we've only seen a few of the elements so far. Also, we've only seen a few of the blocks in the magic system. There are quite a few. Right, uh, so I'm uh, it's it's all uh, it's these ones more or less, uh, more or less these, and a few others. Um, <clears throat> for example, I haven't shown the lens holder yet. Now, if I were to uh, place a lens holder here, actually, let me let me demonstrate it over here. Let me do, let me put the charcoal in. So we've got a mix of uh, potential and energy in this beam, right? 
What if we wanted to purify the beam and only have the energy? Well, we'd put a lens holder here, uh, which doesn't add a delay. Like I said, it's one of the few exceptions. And we're going to add a lens to it. Now, there's several things you can use as lenses. To Right now, since we only want the energy, we're going to use a ruby. And now anything that's in that beam that's not energy is lost. So the potential and stability are lost. They just vanish. So that was a filter, basically. You, rubies are red, energy is red, they go together. Diamonds filter stability, and emeralds filter potential. <clears throat> now, I should mention that, well, there there's some special casing with void, but we'll get to that when we talk about void. Um, <laughs> there's another thing, these, there's, there's uh, some other things these lens holders can do. Uh, for example, if I, pa if I put a piece of pure quartz in it, this is how we craft another cra uh, material we're going to need. If I pass a beam of the light element through it, no other element will work. It won't actually harm the beam at all, and it'll turn it into a piece of luminescent quartz. This is a crafting ingredient, which uh, is, will be necessary later on. This only works with the light element. If I was to, for example, uh, put uh, stability through this. It just passes through without doing anything. <clears throat> right. So those are some of the basics. Now we're going to talk about the other ways to manage magic. We also have the prism, or the crystalline prism to be precise. This is quite an expensive block. Hmm. And it's designed to be. Uh, it's designed to be an expensive block, so that you make builds that use as few of them as possible, uh, and try and uh, minimize them. Uh, they use pure quartz, luminescent quartz, and crystal lens arrays. So yes. <clears throat> and uh, let me build a little something here to show it off. Uh, it can only face horizontally. And it's got a yellow side, a red side, a green side, and a blue side. Now, if I tell you the yellow side is the input, and you know that it's called a prism, you might be able to guess what it does. And even if you can't, I'll show you. Sure, I'll make this one a vertical loop, just why not. Let me just put something in here. Let's let's say some light. I'm gonna break this reflector so, so that it goes into that prism. As you can see, it's split it into its components. All the energy in the incoming beam goes to the left, the potential the potential to the front, uh, and the stability to the right. <clears throat> and if you ever forget that ordering, it's R G B, R G B. Right, that's the prism. There's uh, also a, sta a stabilizer. There's two variants of this. The small quart stabilizer and the large quart stabilizer. Now these actually, the small has two recipes. One uses a crystal lens array and is therefore much more expensive requiring diamonds, emeralds, and rubies. Or, and one uses the small, is uses a piece of luminescent quartz and is much cheaper. <clears throat> but requires you to be making luminescent quartz. And then a large quartz stabilizer is made by surrounding a small quartz stabilizer with pure quartz. These basically do the same thing, but with but uh, the va but the numbers used by the large quartz stabilizer are are different. Um, I'll show you what I mean right now. Um, if I were to put, let's say, uh, let's just say a bunch of uh, coal in there, you'll notice that this thing is pulsing. Just because a hopper isn't uh, inserting items as fast as this thing can use them. If we wanted a, some, a steady beam, if we wanted this to emit a steady beam, just uh, sit down, yep, uh, then we need to probably use a stabilizer. So let me get a small quartz stabilizer and I'll demonstrate with glowstone. Actually, glowstone is bad, it doesn't work with glowstone. Uh, if I put a bunch of salt in here, we're receiving a, a pulse, uh, large pulses, and we're outputting a small constant beam. The 
quartz stabilizer has an internal buffer, and all beams shot into it will be added to this buffer. And every five ticks, it em emits a, a beam from this buffer of uh, of uh, of a, of a constant size, and and uh, tr and it tries to make the output of beam be the same color as the all the magic in its buffer is. And uh, the the size of the buffer and the amount it outputs changes based on the type of uh, stabilizer. The the as it says here, the small quartz stabilizer has a capacity of thirty mat uh, thirty ma magic for the small one, and emits. And emits six magic in a in the beam has a, it emits a six power beam, while the large one has a capacity of one hundred and fifty magic and emits a fifteen power beam. So if I demonstrate that again, with the large one, as you can see, yes. Now it's just draining its buffer. Now if I were to try and use glowstone, this is still pulsing because this thing emits three. And is receiving three per pulse, so yeah, it's it's not it, glowstone's no good even with the small one. It's, it doesn't help. Those are the quartz stabilizers. Now, quite a common uh, useful mission device is the beam splitter. Um. There's two variants of this thing. Well, there's a third one, but we won't talk about that one right now. The basic beam splitter and the redstone beam splitter. So if I just, uh, well, let me just demonstrate this right now. And I'll use a stabilizer to make this easier to demonstrate so I don't have to build loops. See, handy thing. Oop, what did I do? Uh, what did I do? Oh, yes, I know exactly what I did. I know what I did. I know what I did. I know what I did. I should take this out. Right, I, uh, <laughs> yes, I know what I did. I'll explain what I did in a moment. The splitter, the basic beam splitter will take the input of beam and split it so that half of it goes up and a half goes down. Half the power it goes up and half goes down. And what I did wrong was I had it stand sitting on directly on top of a solid block and fed it the charge element, which means that half the beam was going straight down, hitting the block below it, striking it with lightning and summoning fire on and around it. Uh, and the fire around it went here, and the beam then hit the fire. Those beams can collide with anything that is not an air block, including, t but not limited to, torches and fire. However, beams don't collide with other beams, so if you want to have beams cris uh, crossing, like, uh, like through here, that's absolutely fine. Also, they're safe to stand in. So let me just uh, do something so it doesn't do that again. All right. Okay, let me do that again. Here we go. So if we look here, the the power coming in is uh, fifth is uh, sixty, and the power up here is thirty, and the power down here is thirty, and they're approximately the same color. Or actually, in this case, they are exactly the same color because it splits perfectly down the, uh, in half without uh, having to be different colors. And uh, now the, the the redstone beam splitter is only slightly more uh, complicated. Instead of doing a 50-50 split, the split it does is based on the strength of redstone signal. This is also can be used as a junction box. If I just put, uh, I broke the stabilizer. Why did I break the stabilizer? <clears throat> Let me get some more coal. If I do this. Right now, it's receiving a redstone strength of 0, which means all of the magic goes up. If it receives a strength of 15, it all goes down. If it receives a strength of 3, then 3 fifteenths of the magic coming in will go up, sorry, will go down, and the rest will go up. If it receives a signal strength of 11, 11 fifteenths go down, and the rest goes up. A rule of thumb for which direction the redstone signal makes it go on is if you place a lever on the machine, then the magic will go in the direction the lever is pointing. That's just a, uh, a, a memory guide, uh, aid I've found to be helpful. While I'm on the topic of, uh, of splitters, I feel like I should mention the fluid splitter, which while technically not part of the magic system, and is in fact from earlier than the magic system, you don't need to get into magic to get it, I 
ne emitted, I neglected to mention it earlier, so, and it works very similarly, so I think I should just mention it. Two variants, the basic and redstone variant. It works identically to the magic, to the beam splitter, except it's for fluids. Insert fluid into the side. Basic one makes half go up and half go down. Redstone splits it based on redstone signal strength. And I just thought I should mention that because I forgot to earlier and I was on the topic of splitters anyway. Like everything else in the mo in this in Crossroads, there is a way to measure the strength of beams with a red with, red, with a comparator. Uh, back to the lens holder again. Uh, if I place a comparator on a, a, against a lens holder, it will emit a redstone signal of a strength based on the power current of the beam currently going through the lens holder. If there is no, if it Unlike with the omnimeter, where it tells you the strength of the beam that last went through this thing, uh, if, if there is no longer a beam going through the lens holder, it will emit zero instead of remembering the previous value. So if I demonstrate this, now it's got quite a strong one, and the, no beam, then once it dies, yes. the, uh, sig the signal strength is the power of the beam divided by three. Capped at 15, of course, and rounded down. For lens holders that have a lens in them, such as a ruby, it should be noted that the power it measures is the power of the beam going out, not of the beam going in. While I'm on the topic of redstone integration, I should talk about the ratiator, which is specifically a magic device. You need uh, luminescent quartz to make it, so you need to have started magic. And it's basically a more advanced comparator. Um, with a, that, that does different functions. Well, I should, let me just get started explaining it. Uh, you're going to want an omnimeter for this thing. Trust me on this. Because if I shift right click it with an omnimeter, it will tell me the signal strength it is emitting. Now, you'll see that on this thing, uh, there is a, I can right click it to toggle between two blue modes, an X and a divide symbol. That's because while comparators subtract numbers, a ratiator multiplies and divides them. Multiply mode, divide mode. Uh, it should be noted, and this is important, the ratiator has it defined that if it is dividing by zero, if it, if it divides something in value from the back by zero, then it will it output the signal from behind. So if you want to just make a ratiator emit whatever signal is behind it, just set it to divide mode and don't give it tell it to divide by anything. Divide, dividing by zero is just as that, and now it's actually doing division. Now it should be noted that ratiators can handle decimals and numbers larger than 15. While of course when they emit a redstone signal it has to be capped at 15 and rounded, when they, they can actually uh, read from each other, and if they do this, Then they uh, then they can read a decimal value from the previous one. Uh, if it wasn't clear from what I've just done, they uh, perform an operation on sig on the on the signal strength from coming from behind by the signal strength coming from the side. Divide or multiply. And dividing by zero just moves the signal through. Multiplying by zero, up at zero. <clears throat> They can also read uh, the fractions, uh, decimals, and uh, numbers larger than 15 from ratiators in the side. So, yeah. So you can basically have this whole system of these things multiplying and dividing numbers and not actually round until the very end. Also, several devices in Crossroads, where, which can be read by comparator, have different formulas in use if they're read by ratiator, <clears throat> because these things can also read blocks like a comparator can, just the same. For most blocks, their reading is exactly similar to the formula used by a comparator. It'll even round and cap at 15 like a normal comparator does, but for specific crossroads devices, they use a different formula, and that will be noted in the book. For example, uh, when measuring magic coming through a lens holder, instead of dividing by 3, it just gives you the power of the beam. Uh, we're in 
divide mode. Uh, that was actually a power. Uh, hold on. Come to think of it, that is a power 15 beam, so that isn't really demonstrating anything, is it? Let's see, 60. The reason a lot of uh, things in Crossroads use weird formulas for converting to redstone signal strength is to try and pack as much useful data as possible into an integer 0 from 15 range, and you don't have to do that when you've got ratiators. So toggle gears have a much simpler formula with ratiators. It's redstone signal strength equals speed. <clears throat> uh, redstone signal strength, it, it's, and so on. Uh, uh, there's uh, the book will have all the details on everything that can be read by every every device that says if read by a comparator will also say the formula for ratiator. So you can then go back over a lot of earlier builds and replace them with the comparators with ratiators and make them a lot more precise. The next video will continue along with magic, uh, covers a lot of the machines and uh, blocks I've missed, and then go and cover the effects of many of the other elements, and the main purpose of the magic system is the effects of the elements, such as being able to create lightning strikes or produce redstone with charge, uh, uh, the thing, and so on. I mean, we will, co and, uh, and many other useful effects. We'll get to that in the next video.